Welcome to the lab. This is the Bake Scientist channel where we explore the why so you know how. For this Baking Basics episode, we will be exploring the why behind one of the most versatile kitchen staples, cornstarch, so you know how to use it effectively in your kitchen. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all the delicious science. Now let's get into it. So first, I like to take a minute to go ahead and just define what exactly is cornstarch. So cornstarch is a flavorless starch that is extracted from the endosperm of corn kernels. It's white and powdery substance, and it's, like I said, essentially flavorless. Now to dive a little more deeper into this definition, let's go ahead and look at this on a molecular level. So cornstarch is made up of semi-crystalline granules called polysaccharides. Now poly means many and saccharides means sugar. So cornstarch is really a bunch of sugar. <laughs> and the sugars are made up of amylose and amylopectin, which if you've actually uh, watched our cinnamon rolls remixed video, um, we do go into a lot of depth about amylose and amylopectin. So please check that out if you haven't already. But um, amylose and amylopectin are the starches that really make up cornstarch. Um, and almost all of cornstarch's properties come from its ability to gelatinize, which again, um, we have gone over this in our cinnamon video, but we'll talk about more about this here because this is important to cornstarch and what it can do for you in the kitchen. Um, so one thing to note is a proportion of the amount of amylose um, starch in your mixture, how much there is, dictates how strong of a gel you will have. So the higher the amylose content, the stronger the gel will be. So cornstarch actually has an amylose uh, content of about 25%. And so does flour, actually. All-purpose flour has about a 25% amylose content. And you might be thinking, okay, well, well then why can't I just use flour um, to take up the place of cornstarch? Like, why can't I use them interchangeably? Well, the reason for this is because um, a few different things. So cornstarch is, again, like I said, flavorless. It is all starch. It has no proteins or anything else. It's just starch. And um, it is easier to disperse in liquid and to incorporate at lower temperatures. Whereas flour, uh, it, it contains proteins. There's protein flours and flour, which you have to denature and alter those proteins in order to access the starches a lot of the times or to make them more readily available. And that requires uh, most of the time cooking. So here, as you can see, I've pulled out some cornstarch and some flour, and I'm just doing a small kind of experiment so you can kind of see what I mean by you have to use warm temperatures to kind of incorporate the flour a little bit better. So the first batch I'm doing, so I'm showing you um, what the difference between the cornstarch and the flour kind of uh, look like. The flour is a little bit more gritty, the cornstarch is a little bit more smooth when you're up between your fingers. And then um, what I'm going to do is the first two bowls, I'm going to add cold water to, and you can see the difference between the two. Um, as the cornstarch actually uh, disperses pretty readily into the water, and the flour, on the other hand, kind of clumps up and is a little bit thicker. Um, it doesn't really necessarily readily just disperse into the water. Now, the second bowls I'm pulling out, I'm going to add the cornstarch and the flour too, and then I'm going to add hot water. And as you can see, the cornstarch acts pretty much the same way where it incorporates into the water um, pretty easily. But the flour, or the flour also incorporates into the water pretty easily. But again, it's warm water. So flour works better when cooked versus cornstarch, which you can kind of um, use in any situation. So flour also has a flavor. It has that raw kind of taste to it. And in order to, uh, to get rid of that flavor, you do have to cook the flour um, in order to incorporate into your um, dishes. And so a lot of times when you're when you're using flour as a thickener versus or in any recipe that um, you're trying to alter something with it, you would need to cook the flour in order for it to incorporate one into the solution so that you can get that gel and two to get the flavor to uh, go away. So there's pros and cons to each, but as you can see, cornstarch um, is useful in a lot of different areas, whereas flour, it, you can use it in those same areas, but you will have to alter it in some kind of way, either with heat or some other kind of way in order to get as much use out of it as you can readily with cornstarch. So now let's understand a little bit more about how cornstarch works. So a lot of the properties that cornstarch has um, 
come from its ability to gelatinize. And so gelatinization is the process of subjecting a starch to water and you can introduce heat. And this actually helps the starch molecule to swell and absorb that water. When the starch molecule absorbs that water, um, not only is this an irreversible process, but the starch molecule actually will uh, swell and burst. And when it bursts, it releases the um, like a gelish substance into the surrounding liquid, which thus thickens the liquid, or um, if you don't get to the point where it bursts to thicken the liquid, you, your uh, end product is going to have that nice gel, so it's going to be holding on to more moisture. So, um, as, so cornstarch can really be used in uh, numerous ways. It can be used to thicken sauces or soups or anything like that by uh, swelling and then expanding and bursting and letting out those um, starch molecules. Or it can be used in, say, cakes and cookies and retaining the moisture by just allowing that uh, cornstarch to swell, to absorb some of that liquid from your batter and hold on to it. Um, and so it, it swells and holds on to that liquid in that gelatinization process. And in other cases, it can actually help to crisp, um, especially when frying, like fried goods, it helps to crisp because, like I said, it... it when you coat something in cornstarch that you're going to fry, it'll absorb the extra moisture from the thing you're frying, and it holds onto that moisture through the gelatinization. But then when you put it into the hot oil, um, the oil drives off, because oil does not like water, so it likes to drive off water, especially hot oil. So when you introduce that swollen um, starch molecule to the hot oil, it will hold on, it will drive off that water, thus um, leaving the kind of like a splintered matrix and that matrix is it crispies. It, it's what the crispy texture is that we're seeing. And because cornstarch is all starch, we're getting a lot more crisps than we would with flour. And of course there are drawbacks to um, cornstarch. Uh, cornstarch can, um, if you heat it too long, um, it can degrade and then um, just re it just releases all the water back into solution. So it really can thin things out if it's too if it's heated too much. So this is why you would want to introduce, especially if you're trying to thicken a sauce, your cornstarch um, would slurry to the sauce at the end versus the beginning um, because you don't want it to overheat and denature. And um, if you use too much cornstarch, you can also uh, be gummy, get gummy and cakey, especially if you're like frying something and you use too much cornstarch or uh, you are adding it to some kind of baked good and it just absorbs too much water, it becomes gooey. So there, there are drawbacks, but again, there's ways you can use it in the kitchen that are very beneficial. And some of the ways that we've used it in our kitchen thus far is we've um, made sugar cookies. Um, it helps our cookies to be more tender and soft and chewy because again, it, the, the gelatinization of the cornstarch molecules will hold on to that extra moisture because if you think about it, sugar cookies don't have a lot of moisture coming in. All you get is really moisture from the eggs. Um, so it's helping to hold on to any little bit of moisture that there is and give the cookie a little bit more of a tender bite and a chewier bite. And then we've also used this um, to make cake flour for our oatmeal cookies and our pineapple upside down cake. And um, this works because uh, the cornstarch actually will help uh, coat the protein molecules in the flour. Um, and this mimics uh, cake flour because cake flour has a lower protein content than all-purpose flour. Um, we are uh, coating some of those protein flours with the cornstarch to inhibit them from interacting in our recipe, which will um, decrease the gluten content, which will give us a finer crumb, which will give us a more tender product, similar to if you were just using all cake flour. Um, but uh, you can use this trick if you only have all-purpose flour. So that's a great, great option. Um, and like I said, we've used it in both our pineapple upside down cake and our oatmeal cookies. And they've come out with beautiful results. And as I mentioned previously, cornstarch can be used um, to help crisp up um, uh, foods that you're frying. And I've, I've, uh, I fried some chicken, some chicken uh, thighs, just so you guys can kind of see what that looks like. And chicken thighs have no, there's a skinless chicken thigh, so there's no skin on them. And as you can see, if you coat the chicken with the, um, the cornstarch, like I mentioned previously, you're, you're really, uh, getting 
creating some gelatinization by um, having the cornstarch absorb that extra moisture that's on the outside of the chicken. And then when you go and put that in the chicken into some hot oil, what you're doing is you the oil is driving off the moisture, which creates a porous um, network. So the gel it now becomes porous because the moisture is being uh, pop pretty much popped out, creating holes and popping out of the the gel network. So now we have a porous, brittle kind of uh, network now, and that is effectively what is crispy, the crispiness of the chicken. And so that can be done, like I said, with chicken, with anything you're really frying. And the only thing you want to remember is you don't want to use all cornstarch. Um, because as I mentioned previously, if you use too much cornstarch, it can be gloopy because um, it starts absorbing too much water. And then when you fry it, it just can't drive off all that moisture. So it becomes like a big pasty gloop. Um, so what a lot of people or what you really can do is just mix it with another flour. So um, typically it's all-purpose flour. If you have some kind of sensitivity to that, you can use other flours, but you just want to mix um, either half and half or a little bit less than half cornstarch with your flour and use that to coat your um, food and it'll give it an extra crisp. It'll dry off. It'll help absorb a lot of that mo extra moisture that maybe the flour doesn't get out and it'll also help crisp up more because of the properties of the cornstarch. So it's a good option if you are um, trying to get something really crispy. And then um, on top of that, uh, another thing that I, I like to do is I like to use cornstarch slurries. And um, cornstarch, like I said, can thicken uh, sauces and soups because of its ability to absorb that excess water in the sauce and the soup at um, temp uh, high temperatures. Well, not too high because it starts with nature, but at um, warm temperatures, even at low temperatures, it can do this. So uh, what I like to do is when you make a cornstarch slurry, so you always want to add your cornstarch to any kind of liquid um, in, uh, in, a, in a liquid already. So suspend it in a liquid. Uh, and to do that, you want to mix equal parts cornstarch with equal parts of either room temperature or cold water. And you can um, pretty much one tablespoon of cornstarch, one tablespoon of water, mix them together. And uh, then you can use that in your recipe to help thicken your sauce. And if it's not thick enough, then you can always mix a little bit more. But you don't want to just dump the cornstarch into your um, liquid that you're trying to thicken because it will clump. Uh, so you don't want to do that. And it's very hard to get the clumps out. Um, so what you want to do is you want to make that cornstarch slurry. And then once you've made that slurry, just at, to, at the end of your cook, when your food's almost done, you want to go ahead and drizzle it in, mix it up, and then you will see pretty quickly how it starts to thicken. And I've done this here with this chicken that I, I was making. I made a, a orange sauce for it and that you can see it thickened it up really nicely. And I've all, we've also used this um, exact same uh, cornstarch slurry in our peach cobbler recipe. So if you've watched our peach cobbler video, you will see that uh, we did use that there. And again, we use it towards the end of the bake. We poured it in to thicken up our sauce and it came out nice and glossy. Um, cornstarch does tend to create a clear gel, a clear glossy gel. So it does add a nice sheen to sauces too if you um, are adding a cornstarch slurry to your sauce. Whereas flour um, is not is more of a milky color, so it's not gonna give you that shine but it will thicken. And again, flour has its purposes, but cornstarch is what this video is about. So we're gonna talk about cornstarch. And along with all these other great benefits that cornstarch has, um, it also has other properties that we haven't utilized as much in our videos, but it is something that cornstarch can be used for, which is anti-caking properties. And that just means that um, cornstarch, cause it has the ability to absorb water, um, people will add it to things like powdered sugar, or um, shredded cheese, things like that. You can even do this at home. Add it to a little, small amount to your shredded cheeses, or if you make your own powdered sugar, add a little bit of that to your powdered sugar. And what this does is it helps to absorb any excess moisture that will be in these uh, products so that they don't clump together and they don't spoil as easy. So really beneficial for cheese because you don't want your cheese spoiling for moisture or sticking together. And so if you dump a little bit of cornstarch in your shredded cheese and mix it up, you'll coat them in the, in the cornstarch and allow the cornstarch to absorb any of the extra moisture that's coming from the cheese or from the environment so that your cheese isn't sticking together and it's not spoiling as fast. Same with the powdered sugar. Powdered sugar, you don't want it clumping because then it's almost impossible to use. So it's great to add some um, cornstarch in there whenever you, if you make your own powdered sugar or if you even at the store, that's what they do when you buy a bag of it at the store. A little bit of cornstarch has been added and that just helps with the caking properties. So now that you know the science behind one of the most versatile products in the kitchen, please subscribe and let us know and leave a comment below and let us know what you use cornstarch for if you've used it in any capacity in your kitchen and how you plan on using it in the future now that you know the benefits and the abilities of this, this simple ingredient, cornstarch.
Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy baking!